Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, we head down to Florida to catch one of my new favorite judges to watch when it comes to no-nonsense courtrooms, especially when it comes to sovereign citizens and their fictitious plates. And when I say no-nonsense, I mean a little something like this. Mr. Thompson? You're now the attorney in fact for the state name. No, sir, Mr. Thompson, you know I don't put up with any of that. You understand? Right. <laughs> Listen to me. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You understand I'm not going to put up with that? Yes, sir. Not anything like that. You understand? Do you understand me? Yes. There's not going to be any private citizen, sovereign citizen, any of that. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. His name is Judge Brantley Clark, and he ain't fucking around. Now, we have four different appearances to cover by Judge Clark, so let's begin. You're before the court today for your uh, affidavit of violation of probation. You filed a bunch of stuff that doesn't make any sense. I've denied most of it. I'm going to probably deny the rest of it. Really? Yes, sir. All right. Absolutely. I got some education to go, huh? Sir? So I, I've got some education to go. Yes, sir. Do you, you're here today by you got a new law violation to drive my license suspender and vote. You, you don't want to have an attorney appointed to represent you? No, sir. You sure? But that's the thing is I didn't ever, I've, I've never even been pulled over. I don't know how I got a license or, or a, a warrant or anything. I've never been, I haven't been pulled over in more than a year, or any emergency contact. I went to go pick up a records request and they gave me a warrant instead of the records. Do y'all know anything about this? As to the new law. Do you have a driver's license? No, sir. I, I, that, don't answer that. I shouldn't ask that question. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Strike that from the record. I won't do that if you if you won't do any other mess. I won't I won't ask you that question. Judge Clark almost messed up big there as he nearly asked the defendant to admit that he drove without a license on the record. Now had he admitted it and had that statement been used against him, then this idiot may have had grounds to have any conviction against him thrown out. Um but you transfer that to just filed. I, I just filed in the court file. I tried to, and they wouldn't accept it. All right. Um, was he arrested? Is there a new arrest for driving a license vendor a vote? State? Yes, there was a bench warrant issued on 123 24. You did 129 24. But I was just doing a records request and had an agreed upon date to pick it up, went up there to pick it up, and gave me a warrant. So the records are requested. What I'm gonna let you that. That. Listen, I'm gonna just I'm gonna leave him on probation. I'm gonna set this for preliminary mm -hmm. on uh April. What's that April date? April 17th. April 17th. I'm gonna let him take care of that in county court and see what happens, okay? Thank you. And I think that's the only violation he had. Yes, sir. Just keep doing what you're doing on in, in, on this, and then we'll see you back in April and you can take care of that in county court, okay? Right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sign a notice. So in this case, what appears to have occurred is that this idiot drove to the records office to pull some paperwork and they noticed that he drove without a license and issued him a citation at a later date. And that charge is grounds for a probation violation. But Judge Clark is allowing him to take care of his matters in county court before deciding whether to sanction him with either jail time or outright probation revocation. The next case is just an arraignment. So it's short, but it's pretty wild. What's your name, sir? The beneficiary of Cedric Alexander, a human being. Mr. Alexander, I don't accept any of that. If you want to state your name, state your name. If you don't, that's fine. I don't say Cedric Alexander, the beneficiary, sir. No, sir. I don't. Uh, the beneficiary doesn't mean anything to me, says. Are you Cedric Alexander? I'm, I'm a human being, Cedric Alexander, not the corporation. I wouldn't be held with that. You I'm, I'm a human being. I'm a human being. I'm a human being. I'm a human being. I'm going to appoint the Office of Public Defender. You've got a failure to appear on a uh, your your I have ordered to be held without bond on that. I'm going to leak that as it is. Uh, you've got a possession of methamphetamine. And see, that might be all the same thing. Yeah. You've just got a failure to appear. You've got to drive my life, spend your vote, and we'll find there's probable cause and we'll set. That's a third or so that's a third degree felony punched for five years the Florida Department of Corrections under five thousand dollars. I am going to set a five thousand dollar bond. I'll see you March eleventh at nine o'clock. Good luck. Thank you, sir. All right, go ahead and step out for me. I love it. Short and sweet. If he doesn't want to identify, then throw him in jail. And if he does identify, 
then keep him in jail for violating his probation. Now the next two hearings are quite a bit longer. First, we appear to have a probable cause hearing, where a sovereign citizen LARPs as his own lawyer and fails miserably. Preliminary adversarial hearing, you're representing yourself. You know, at any point in time, you can ask an attorney to be appointed to represent you. Do you understand? Uh, yes, sir. Do you still wish to represent yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Uh, you can call your first witness. All right, state calls officer. Is it zip? Sure, zip. All right. Just read the witness in. I do. Can you state your name for the record, please? Richard Ziff. Where are you employed? Yeah, uh, Panel City Police Department. Were you working in November of 2023? I was. Uh, on November 11th, 2023, did you have occasion to come in contact with uh, the defendant Josiah Beach? I was. How did you come to uh, come in contact with him? It was an investigative stop. Um, Mr. Beecham's vehicle was having a hard time maintaining its lane. I conducted a traffic stop on the vehicle. Vehicle drove over the curb. Immediately when I stopped the vehicle, I can smell marijuana coming from within the vehicle while still sitting inside my own vehicle. As I got closer to the vehicle, I can smell the marijuana getting stronger. Uh, when I made contact with Mr. Beecham in the driver's seat, I asked him, to, I informed him the nature of the stop. Also told him I smelled marijuana in the vehicle. At that point, Mr. Beecham uh, was saying I was violating the Treaty of Florida, uh, making other statements that he was not driving, he was traveling. You know, I thought I've heard all sovereign citizen arguments, but this one is a first. The Treaty of Florida, also known as the Adams Onis Treaty, is an actual treaty, and it has to do with the secession of Spanish lands to the United States in 1819, and has nothing to do with a sovereign citizen's right to travel in his road canoe. And as far as traveling goes, I've watched hundreds of these traveler videos, and I've only seen one actual traveler. Me. Two weeks ago, I was making fun of travelers in Dublin. Last week, I was making fun of travelers in Amsterdam. This week, I'm making fun of travelers in Prague. Next week, it'll be Vienna. And finally, I'll be traveling to Madrid to make fun of travelers. And none of it would have been possible without today's sponsor, Exter. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, then you will have already heard me mention the Exter brand, especially their smart wallets. But I'm not here to actually talk about their trackable wallets. No, because when I told them that I was going to be making another trip to Europe, they insisted on sending me their new travel duffel bag backpack. It's a special travel pack that can be carried like a duffel or worn like a backpack. It's TSA approved for carry-on, so you don't have to worry about airport employees accidentally sending your bag on a random trip to Morocco. Now don't get me wrong, it's actually big enough to stuff a malnutrition Moorish American in it and send his ass back to the country he claims to be from. It even has a special compartment for all his travel documents, like his ID, his passport, and his fee schedule. Seriously though, on screen you can see the unpacking of my old bag and the repacking into my new extra travel duffel bag backpack. And just look at all that extra space. There's so much room for activities. So follow the link in the description to my partner site and enter code skeptic at checkout to get an additional discount on top of my partner price. So thank you extra for sponsoring this video. And now it's time to get back to our regularly scheduled paint consumption. And at one point I uh, asked him to identify himself. He refused to identify himself. He uh, began to call. 911 and requested a Bay County deputy respond to the scene because he refused to cooperate with me. Officer Zip, at some point, um, based on the smell of marijuana, did you uh, search the, the vehicle and, and Mr. Beecham's person? I did. Um, during that search, did you locate anything of, of, of note, of significance? Uh, we found trafficking amounts of controlled substances. I believe we were, uh, one of them tested positive for cocaine. There was marijuana. And we believe fentanyl. Um, did you find uh, any firearms during the search? There was a firearm located underneath the driver's seat that Mr. Beecham was sitting on. I think you mean it was under the travel pad that he was resting his brain on. But now, I think it's time we let this beautiful mind out of its cage so that it can fly straight into a steel fan. Uh, did you run a criminal records check on Mr. Beecham? We did. Uh, did you find out whether he had been uh, previously convicted of any felonies? He was on inmate release status for a felony. 
I uh, believe the same charges. Uh, that's uh, all my questions at this time. Uh, Mr. Beecham, any questions? Uh, yes. Uh, so, did I have a passenger in the car with me at the time? You did. Uh, upon you saying you smell the smell of marijuana, did I say that I smoked hemp? You did admit to it. I said I smoked hemp, right? You said you smoked marijuana. Uh, sir, did you have on a body cam? I did. And I, okay, thank you, Your Honor. So I, <laughs> so I said, so your body cam was on at the time, and uh, where you uh was, the, did you get any competent uh bases on the trap the traffic stop as far as like a recording of that video? I don't have a dash cam. You don't have a dash cam in your car. We don't have dash cams in Panama City okay. Police cars. That's cool. And I was failing to maintain the lane. Okay, was it any other traffic on the road? You were the only vehicle. Okay. And uh, how long were you behind me before you actually pulled me over? I was behind you about two blocks. Watched you drift over the center line several times. Several times. Drift off the line. Uh, did you have to catch up to me? Uh, you know, I have a dash cam and rear view cam. I'm probably going to introduce the What you call it? Did you have to, have to catch up to my vehicle? or? I did not have to catch up that much. I was right behind you. I'm saying that the stretch of the uh, road was, uh, we was traveling on Beach Drive, that's right? Yes. And you were behind me the entire stretch of Beach Drive? No, I was behind you by Balboa. By Balboa is when you got behind me. Okay. And uh, so when did you notify me or the passenger about any other drugs or gun? Immediately. Immediately? And... What was said about the uh, drugs or gun? What did the passenger say? The gun was found after you were already detained. We found, uh, searched the vehicle and it was underneath your seat. Okay. And was the vehicle registered to me? The vehicle was registered to your girlfriend. Okay. And so uh, where were the drugs or anything found in the vehicle? You had drugs in your pocket. And there's also drugs in the back seat behind your seat. And <laughs> you found the drugs? I found a bag of white substance in your right front pocket. What about any vehicles in the, in the car? There was a bag in behind the driver's seat that had several other bags that were wrapped in a clear plastic baggies that was behind your seat. Okay. And uh, so... What did you question the passenger on? That would be my partners who questioned the passenger. I questioned you. Yes, and what what did I uh, did I admit to any of the drugs? You refused to talk to me, other than saying I was violating the Treaty of Florida. Exactly. Uh, and so you did. You notified me on drugs being found in the car on the scene. You're saying everything was notified to you. I tried reading you implied consent. You refused to actually listen to me. You kept on saying I was violating the Treaty of Florida and you. Yeah, I was saying you was violating the constitutional rights as well of uh, unreasonable search and seizure. What's crazy about this is he has enough brain cells to say all the words correctly. He just appears to not have enough neurons to make it all make sense. What I mean to say is that he's intelligent enough to claim that his Fourth Amendment was violated, just not intelligent enough to explain how it was violated. Because I never really got a direct quote on why you actually stopped the vehicle. It's all in body came up. Okay. And so uh, you never had a conversation with the passenger. I was mostly talking to you and searching the vehicle. I believe my sergeants wanted to talk to Mr. Wheeler. Okay. And so uh, you're saying your passengers, I mean, your other one of your uh, partners found the drugs that was actually in the car? Mm, I found drugs in the vehicle. Oh, you found the drugs in the vehicle? Yes. Behind the driver's seat, you're saying? And the objection. Ask your next question. Okay. You know, you did already admit that I said I admitted to smoking him. Okay. Um, and you, your vehicle is not, a, you say they don't got dash cams. 
Okay. Uh, so at the time, did you have a sight on the passenger and the driver at the whole time? I was. I was right there behind the A pillar or B pillar. What was that, sir? I was there the entire time of talking to you. No, I'm okay. So when you extracted me out of the car, did you have eyes on the passenger at that time? After I removed you from the car, I did not have eyes on the passenger, just you. Okay, cool. And so, in your report, you never wrote a ticket for the failing to maintain lanes, nor did you mention it in your affidavit of complaint. It's going to be in my report, report, the narrative on the case. Well, I mean, this was the probable cause, and this was uh, the immediate uh, review. So is it sustained? Ask a question. Okay. Is it a reason why you didn't mention it in your affidavit of complaint? The affidavit only shows PC for why we arrested you. It doesn't state in there why I had to stop you. It just shows in there why I arrested you. And in regards to you maintain a lane, that goes back to the DUI, which does not go on the complaint. That goes on the traffic ticket. Well, I mean, you never mentioned anything of that nature in the ticket. So I was just wondering, is, it a, is that protocol for you not to uh, explain in the affidavit of complaint? It's going to be in the report. Okay. And you say you had a body camera on again. That's correct. That's not sustained objection. Ask your next question. Okay, uh, and so was it possible for any of the drugs to be the passenger? It was all in your control. It was within your reach, behind your seat, and then you had drugs in your right front pocket. I said, was it possible to be the passenger? It could be possible, but the same drug that was in your right front pocket was also in that bag behind your seat. What drug was in my right front pocket? Cocaine. And about how much was that? You had a bag that was wrapped in your front pocket. About how much? You... I don't have the numbers on me right now. I have my report in front of me. Okay. This is a copy of your report. You know? That's actually not my report. That's the affidavit complaint. My report's about five pages long. Okay. And so you ceased the vehicle for... Failing to maintain a lane. You said, was any other traffic affected by the occurrence? You were the only one on the road. You had a failure to maintain your lane several times and drove over the curb. What curb, actually? The curb I stopped you at. I believe it was on Farallon. Okay. Yeah, and at this time, I don't have any more questions. Uh, okay. Okay. Any reader rep from the state? There you are. And the witness be excused. Yes, sir. So you can go about your day. Either. Anything else from the state? There you are. Mr. Beecham? Uh, Your Honor, there's no uh, actual competent and substantial evidence in the affidavit of complaint, nor was it a, any ticket issue for the uh, actual, you know, uh, failing to maintain a lane, you know. So, I mean, being that it was immediately after the Arrest. I don't see how he had probable cause to stop me, and I actually asked him for, uh, yeah, the sheriff to verify that, hoping that he had a uh, dash cam in his car. Mr. Whether a traffic ticket was issued or not is irrelevant. Yeah. Well, I have more find there's probable cause uh, for the arrest. And I believe that's what I'm here today to do as far as the, the adversarial preliminary hearing. So I found there's probable cause. Uh, we'll need another court hearing. Do we have this transcribed? You can file a motion to have it transcribed. Yes, sir. Uh, we need to set another hearing. You understand Mr. Beachman, any point in time that you ask for an attorney, one can be appointed to represent you. If you meet the financial requirements, uh, you want to set up for another pretrial? Beecham? So let's set it for uh, April 18th at um, 9 o'clock. All right, so that's the end of the third video. Judge Clark found probable cause, as he should, and the next time that we'll be seeing this soft tart will be in mid-April. So now we're going to move on to the fourth trial, which is a three-day trial, and opens up with the defendant and his lawyer trying to explain why an illegal tag should be admitted. Now, I give it to his lawyer. He makes a valiant effort, 
But he's dealing with Judge Clark, who's a brick shithouse when it comes to sovereign citizen arguments. We're on the record. State of Florida versus Lee Forson, Forson Baker, case number 23 CF 3817. Mr. Baker's present in the courtroom, appropriately dressed with Mr. Meredith and Mr. Paul, State Attorney Mr. Pereira, and Mr. Sullivan are also mm -hmm. present. Uh, Deputy Dexter, we have all the jurors present. They are, brothers. They are. We had two that were in the restroom, and then they'll be brought upstairs. All right, very good. All right, anything we need to take up prior to bring the jurors in? Yes, Your Honor. Um, after meeting with uh, Mr. Baker yesterday, he expressed an interest in representing himself today again. So I don't know if he wants to. I'm not sure whether he wants to represent himself or not, because the state is the second thing I would address is the state's filed a motion in limine that we object to, depending on the ruling there. Uh, I'm not sure if that will affect uh, Mr. Baker's decision. All right, well, let's take it the motion in limine right now. Uh, it's the motion in limine, Mr. Frey, you filed it? Yes, Your Honor. If, uh, the state is moving, Your Honor, to exclude testimony of two things. First is testimony or the legality of the of his license plate uh, or any sort. I, my understanding is that Mr. Meredith intended to elicit testimony about the origin of the license plate. We feel that the probable cause is enough already with the rolling stop uh, that it was it would be irrelevant. The defendant is no longer is in charge with any type of traffic offense. Uh, they're not legal defenses to to the charge that he's brought with fleeing to eluding in the possession of drugs. Um, Your Honor, the, the state intends to introduce uh, some body cam from Officer Elkins um, as in relation to the original stop. Um, and Mr. Baker has his hands at, out of the window and is talking to the officer about what the reason for the, the stop is. Um, there is a, a, a tag that's, um, that's on there in the edited version of the body cam. It is mentioned that the two reasons for the stop were rolling through a stop sign and, a, and a, a, either, I can't remember if it was bad tag or no tag or, or, or whatever. Um, but I, th I think that um, it's important for the jury uh, to understand um, that the origin of, of this tag and what it represented. I, I, as an officer of the court and under the rules of, uh, of the bar, I don't um, believe I could argue that it's a valid um, a tag, but I, I think the, the origin of it is, is important for the it's not a valid tag. What does it matter what origin or the origin of it is? Well, we're not going, I'm not going down that road. Mr. Mr. Baker felt that it was a legal tag. Was it um, issued from the from the Department of Motor Vehicles from the state of Florida? It was not. Or the tax collectors on it? Um, not a legal tag. If you'd like to see a, a a photocopy of what it is. It's a tag. Yeah. My tag. My tag is from the deal. It's a DOT number because my tag belongs to my trust. Okay. My DOT number is valid. So why 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 wouldn't the tag? Be? Nope. Not not going in. And we're not going to talk about it. Can I put anything on the record? You put on the record, but I'm telling you. I, I, I'm not anything that's that's not a legal tag from the state of from from the United from the, one of the states of the United States or I guess it uh, is. You got the information yesterday. He emailed you the information where the tag came from and, and what was going on with the tag. Uh, Your Honor, I, I can't saying, have a custom tag. Let Mr. Meredith make your argument, sir, please. Your Honor, the the number that's contained on the, the tag, the four one two five four nine two is a Department of Transportation number that is assigned to Mr. Baker. I have gone on their website. You can search that number. And when you do, it comes up with Mr. Baker's name, his address, and, and all his information. 
Now, depending on what we're allowed to, his testimony uh, would be as to how he had obtained this and had um, gone through um, um, and, and got it from a third party in, in New Jersey. And because it had the Department of Transportation uh, logo, which, which is a, the actual logo from the Department of Transportation, and it had his um, actual identifying number from the, floor, uh, from the United States Department of Transportation uh, that you could display it. Is it a legal ballot tag? Can you make that argument? Yes. I, I cannot. Okay, it's not coming in. We have run the tag number. It's, it's not coming in. It's not on the record. And also, the state not charged him with a improper tag. Exactly. I don't even have a ticket for anything that they pulled me over for. You know, you would really benefit if you just let your lawyer do all the talking because the judge and prosecutor are about to make a really good point. Because even if the court was to accept the DOT designation on his property as meaning that he doesn't have to have a driver's license to drive his car, it still doesn't explain why he's in possession of a trafficable amount of narcotics. Exactly. That's not what you want to trial for. All right, Mr. Merritt and Mr. Pereira. Anything else on that, Mr. Pereira, uh, Mr. Merritt? I think that's paragraph one, but there's a second paragraph. Right. You know, there's a second paragraph on there. The state is looking to exclude any uh, testimony in terms of uh, defenses related to the defendant's status as a sovereign and or a private citizen. I like to uh, point the court to controlling authority in Barber versus Bay County Sheriff's Office jail facility. For the record, the site of that is 308 3rd Southern. It starts on page 254. Uh, I like to quote from... This case, Your Honor, that says the sovereign citizen theory has no basis in the law and parties that make it are in danger of court sanctions. And, party, and to our knowledge, no court in this country has ever found sovereign citizens to have any merit. They're relying on the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals decision in the United States versus Benneby. For the record, that's uh, 654, third federal, 753, where it talks about where it's just not specifically about sovereign citizens, but encapsulates all of the arguments there. So regardless of an individual's claim status of descent, be it as a sovereign citizen, a secured party creditor, or a flesh and blood human being, that person is not beyond the jurisdiction and the court is correct in rejecting all of those claims. However, they are presented and they should be rejected summarily. Uh, it's, we're not raising it as a defense, but I believe that Mr. Baker testifies for the jury to understand um, what was in his mind um, on October 7th of this past year. They need to understand his um, ideology, his understanding of, of, uh, of what um, he was required to do and how he could uh, live his life. It's not, again, I cannot raise it to a defense, but I think we need to talk about what he felt. In his mind, it's not a defense. Why is it relevant for for the jury to understand what what was going on in his mind during the stop and well, pro proper proper what you think the testimony might be. Um, uh, and it, it, it goes back partially to to the tag, but he. Um, I thought he had registered the tag uh, properly through the United States Department of Transportation. Uh, he, he's not. He Mr. Had, Baker, that's enough. He had a, a, a license um, that wasn't from the state of, of Florida. It was an um, international license. But his, his license was suspended in, in the state of Florida. Um, but when he was stopped, Again, he was trying to ask the officer what was the purpose for the stop. The officer, immediately upon exiting his vehicle, prior to any fleeing, unholstered his service weapon, pointed it at uh, the defendant, and, and began yelling at him to turn the car off, turn the car off. And after 30 to 40 seconds, for his life, Mr. Baker left. What does that have to do with being a private citizen or, or, or a uh, 
sovereign citizen or anything like that. In his mind, he, he the, the the basis of the state is is now going forward on as a road through a stop sign, which we dispute. But he does not think that he did not stop, and he was trying to ask the reason for the stop, and he, he didn't get any answer. He just got a, a gun uh, being pointed at him with an aggressive officer. I mean, I understand all that, and I think all that may be relevant to it to, to that. I mean, you make a but what about a private citizen or a uh, a sovereign citizen? What does that have any relevance? Well, he, he doesn't consider himself a sovereign citizen. Oh, a private but, citizen. Um, it, it, it's just his, his mindset as to, to why he would um, um, act um, in, the, in the manner that he did and the, the, the subsequent actions that, that he took to uh, get out of... Uh, what he perceived as danger. But I understand that. I mean, I don't know that that's not irrelevant. I mean, I don't know that that's, that I'm, I, I say that might be relevant, but what about the private citizen and, and that? That's the issue right now, according to the state. If, if we couch it in terms of his fear without saying sovereign citizen, private citizen, I, I I think that's fair. Is there any objection to that? No, I mean, if he testifies that, a, that the gun was pulled and, and he was in fear, I mean, that's that's a that would. I don't know why the jury couldn't consider that, but as far as a private citizen or anything other, any other couch, I'm not allowing any of that in. I, I don't think it's relevant. Well, and we weren't using that as a defense, just to, to for. I understand, for but, I, understand but I understand. I'm not. We're, we're not going down that road at all. But now, if he if he wants, if there's testimony that what you've cast, I mean, I think that is relevant. Um, and, and I understand the, the court's ruling. Um, I'm concerned that my with my client being able to abide by those and being able to control his answers. Okay. Well, uh, let me just say that if when there's an objection made, that I will come sidebar a couple of times, and then if I have to, it'll be in front of the juror my rulings and why my rulings are what they are. Fix the microphone, we can speak directly into the microphone and Mr. Meredith, you may inquire whenever you're ready. Mr. Baker, if you would tell the, the jury your friend. Lee Baker, Lee Forzon Baker. And you're a junior? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, where in Bay County do you live? Lynn Haven. Uh, now, how many felony convictions do you have? Eight. I want to direct your attention back to October 7th of this, this past year. Did, did you see Miss Ivy? Yes. Um, and who, who is she to you? Uh, just someone I'm intimate with. Uh, how long have, have you known her? About two and a half years. Is it um, routine for you to see each other in yeah. places together? Yes. Now, on that, um, we're, we're talking about October 7th. That's early in the morning. It was the night of October 6th into the 7th. Um, about what time uh, did you go um, to see Miss Ivy? I said about 12. I got over there about 11, 12, 1130, 12 o'clock. And um, what was... What was the point of you visiting her that morning? Uh, I was going to get the key because they were going out of town. So I ended up hanging out for a little while. We ended up watching a movie, having sex and stuff like that. Then we, then we left the house. Well, um, when you're leaving her house, where were you heading? I was actually headed to see a friend of mine. I was going to see a friend of mine take her with me. We was actually got to go hang over there for a little while before we went back to her house. Now, uh, so at, at some point in the morning, you you were prepared to leave the, the trailer park and go see your friend? Yes. Um, now, did you notice um, a Springfield police officer there in the trailer park? No, I didn't. Um, at some point, did did you see him? Yes. Once, once he got, once he got behind us and uh, got ready to put his lights on. Okay. 
And was that in the trailer park or out on? Uh, out of the trailer park. I'm sorry. Out of the trailer park. Now, is, is there a stop sign going from the trailer park out onto Everett Avenue? Yes. Did you stop at that stop sign? Yes, I did. Now, early that morning, was there any traffic on Everett Avenue or in the trailer park? No. And approximately where uh, were you um, when you noticed um, the officer behind you? When I turned on Everett Avenue, I noticed it was an officer because how close he had got up behind us before, right before he turned his lights on and I made a left. Okay. And that's the, the left onto the 6th? 6th Street, whichever one of those. I can't remember which street it was exactly, but I know I made a left. Now, um, you didn't stop there on 6th? No. Um, and why was that? Now, I kept going because I was trying to get somewhere safe, actually. But I wanted to get where there was a lot of traffic at. So that's why I really went to East Avenue so I can get on the main highway somewhere where traffic is going by and people can see. So I wanted to get somewhere safe where I can, before I stop. Now that's a bullshit excuse because even in the states where the law says that when an officer turns on his lights, you need to find a safe place to stop it needs to be as soon as possible. What the law doesn't state is that you can drive around town to find the most populated area to pull over. Now, um, we, we've seen in the state's demonstrative today um, on 6th Street, there's you go by Kraft and there's a stop sign there. Yeah. Did you stop at that stop sign? Yes, just like we've seen on the video. You can clearly see my, my brake lights at every stop sign. And there's a stop sign on 6th and East. Did you stop there? Yes, sir. You did pull over on East Avenue. Yes, sir. Now, was there any traffic there? No, sir. None at all. Um, were there any street lights um, on? Six or east until you pulled over. There were there were a couple, but it was it wasn't nothing like. I just didn't feel comfortable pulling over in a residential neighborhood in front of people's houses. So I really was trying to get on East Avenue, where traffic was, hoping someone else was going to come. And how fast were, were you going during this? Period? Ten, fifteen miles an hour. Um, where you pulled over, um, it didn't look like there was much traffic there either. No, no. Um, why did you pull over there as opposed to continuing? Because over? I seen I couldn't go no further because if I keep going any further, it was going to turn into a fling to a loo. I didn't want any of that to happen. So I just really pulled on over to just to get to get the situation over with. When I seen that no other cars and stuff were coming, I just pulled over. When you pulled over, tell us what happened. When I pulled over, I seen the officer jump out with his gun. Well, at first I had wrote my window down. I wrote my window down. I had my license, registration, everything ready to present to the officer because that's what I'm thinking. That's what type of stop it's going to be. But when I see he, he had his gun drawn telling me to get out of the car, I done been pulled over several times before by the police. I've never been demanded to get out of my vehicle, to turn my vehicle off. The officer just pulled over. Get He tell me why he pulled me over, and he asked me for my license and registration. So being that this guy was had his gun and demanding that I turn my car off and all of this, I'm like, dang, what's going on? Why? How? And that's why I asked him what crime had been committed by me knowing a little bit about the law. I know some type of crime has to be committed or I have to have some type of warrant. Somebody's life got to be in danger for him to pull his gun. So that's why I asked him what type of crime had been committed. Look here, Dick Flute. You didn't pull over when the officer turned on his lights. 
And that is why you're in the situation today. And that is also why he pulled out his service weapon. And you putting him in a position to pull out his firearm is not a valid excuse for you to take him on a high-speed chase, break several other laws, and put innocent people's lives in danger. You know? And when he pulled his gun, could you see where it was pointed? Most definitely. Where was it pointed? It was pointed at my vehicle. Um, and we've seen the, the video, but how long do you think it, it was that uh, he was pointing it at you? Well, you know, the video was actually edited, so. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Move to strike. I say about, I say about, we were interacting, the conversation that lasted for about four or five minutes, back and forth. From the moment that he gets out until you leave, where is this guy? Pointed at my vehicle. What were you feeling at that point? The only thing I was thinking about is if he's doing this, ain't no telling what else he's going to do, if he's really going to shoot or not. So, you feel threatened? I felt threatened and I feared for my life. Were you really fearing for your life? Or were you actually fearing for the years of life that you would have lost if they found your meth and coke? At that point... Pulled over and you stopped. Why did you leave at that point? Because I feared for my life. If 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 the officer would have just walked up, asked me for my license and registration, I wouldn't have went nowhere. I would have gave him everything that he needed and I would have complied with the whole thing. It's just that the way that the situation had happened, I had I had never been in a situation like that before. So I panicked. You no, know, first thing thinking in my mind, like especially over the last seven years, look how many people been killed that traffic stop. Where were you trying to go? I was trying to go to the Bay County Sheriff's Office because we couldn't get them on the phone, and my mind was so messed up to call nine one one to have them dispatch the sheriff's officer over there. And, and where is the um, Bay County Sheriff's Office located? On Highway seventy seven. In what town? In La Haven. Um, when you eventually have to stop, had you gotten to the sheriff's department by that time? No, sir. Now, um, the deputy hires uh, pulled in behind you at some point on East Avenue. Did you ever see the sheriff's department vehicle in in the pursuit? No, sir. You know, once you stop around 3700 block of East Avenue, did you comply with the officer's orders at that time? Yes, I was, Ben. I was complying until I realized that the situation would seem like it was going to get more out of hand. Did, did you get out of the vehicle at his request? Yes. Like the video showed, you got out. Put your hands up yes. on the ground. Yes, I did. If you hadn't felt threatened, would you have left? I would East not. Avenue? I would not have had a left East Avenue. I had no reason to. I don't have any other questions. Drugs in your car would have been a good reason to flee, right? No. You didn't want to get caught with the drugs, did you? You knew you'd go to jail if you got caught with drugs, correct? Yeah, yeah honestly, if I knew those drugs was in my car, I had plenty of time to throw it out the window if I was thinking like a convict trying to elude the police. So, um, thinking like a convict, you're an eight-time convicted felon, correct? Yes. Um, you first saw this officer before he even turned his lights on. Yes, once so you, he pulled up and... You knew he was the police? Yes. And when he turned his lights on, turned his sirens on, you knew it was the police? Yes. And you continued to drive uh, on Everett? Yes. And then on 6th? Yes. You go through Kraft? 
Yes. You go all the way to east? Yes. Turn on to east? Yes. Continue to drive? Yes. So I got somewhere that I felt safe, like the law says that we're to do. And there was no other traffic on? No. On East Ave either? No. But you still felt comfortable enough to pull over there? Because I was not trying to escalate the situation and, and get it treated like how it got treated anyway. And your testimony today is that you sat there for four to five minutes? Yes. On the side of East Avenue? Yes. Four to five minutes? Four to five minutes, conversing okay. with the officer back and forth. All right. Um, and... Then eventually you take off. Yes. And you are going over 100 miles an hour. No. Your testimony is you were not driving over 100 miles an hour. No. I took you off. Saw that the I, seen, I seen the same. Let me, Mr. Baker, let me, let me finish okay. my question. You saw the dash camera that showed the officer's speedometer. That was the officer's speedometer. I took you off. Were, it was the officer's speedometer, and it was mm -hmm. over 100 miles an hour. Correct? I, I seen his. You yes. were driving in front of him. Yes. He didn't pass you, did he? No. So obviously you were going faster than he was, right? Yes. So I took he was off. going 100 miles an hour, you had been going at least 100 miles an hour or faster, right? No. He didn't even come right behind me. If his dash cam would work, like he's saying that it didn't, you would actually get to see exactly what happened. Responsive. Same thing. So your testimony is you did not want to flee and elude. But you took off and fled this officer at over 100 miles an hour. You keep saying I fled over 100 miles an hour. I did leave the scene and flee for my life. Yes, I did. Now, let's let's talk about that. You're, you're in fear for your life. Now, eventually, you, you wreck the car and you keep driving. Yes. And you get out of the car and the officers are telling you to get on the ground. Yes. Now, you would agree with me that the officers don't know who you are at this point. Correct? Yes. They don't know whether you're armed at this point. Yes. They don't know what you have in the car at this point. Yes. And you would agree with me that you, despite being in fear for your life, at one point get off, off the ground and reach back into the car, right? Yes. You would agree with me that that action, that that officer that's standing there has no idea why you're going back into the car. Correct? Yes. What you're reaching for. Whether you're reaching for a gun. Yes. You would agree that that is the most dangerous thing that you could do if you were truly in fear for your life. That has nothing to do with the initial situation and what put my life at fear. That situation, when I reached back in my car and that officer had his gun on me, just like you've seen, I complied with what he said. And that's bullshit, too, because when they finally pulled you over and had their weapons drawn on you, you decided to go back in your car. You're lucky the officers didn't have you take the room temperature challenge right there on the side of the road. Uh, Madam Clerk, if we could have the screens, I'm gonna pull the state's demonstrative uh, map that was used earlier. So looking at the map here where Everett Avenue is, this is a residential area, this is where you do not want to pull over, correct? No. Go over to East Ave, go up, and you ultimately pull over here, uh, on East Ave, just below 7th Court, correct? Yes. Okay. Because you want to be in a more populated area. Yes. Okay. And then you take off and drive north on East Ave. Yes. You come up here to 11th Street. 11th Street's a pretty big intersection. It's a pretty major road in Bay County, correct? Yes. You don't stop at 11th Ave. You continue to no, drive. No, I told you. I was trying to get to Bay County Sheriff's Office on Seven Highway 7. All right, all right, Mr. Baker. We'll keep going here. Um, you get up here to 98. 98 so major road here in Bay County? Yes, it is. And you don't stop at 98, the intersection 98 mm -hmm. in. In fact, you blow up through a red light, keep going. Yes, I was. Yes, I did. Keep going north. We get up here to 231. That's an even bigger intersection than 11th and 98. Yes, again, I yeah, was trying to get to Highway light, 77. Don't stop. Right? I was trying to get to the police to protect me. 77 is west of this, isn't it? No. Pull out. Highway 77, the left of the screen. That'd be to the west of the direction you're going, which is north, right? Yeah, as soon as I get down to, uh, to what's the name, I can make a left and go right to the sheriff's department. You could have done that on 98, right? Take, no. Taking a left on 98, going to 77, strict shot north from there, right? That's not how my mind was thinking. My mind was so discombobulated. I'm just trying to get to the sheriff's office, somewhere that's safe. With a bunch of drugs in your car. I'm not worried about the drugs. I didn't even know the drugs was there, if you want to be honest with me, no, but I'm not going to say how the drugs got inside my car. Any redirect? Mr. Baker, the fact is you were not armed at any time that night, were you? No. And no 
weapons were found in your vehicle, were they? No. And the officer is traveling at 121 miles per hour, but he catches up to you. Yes. So to catch up to you, you have to be going less than that. Yes, you? most definitely. No further questions. Any other questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Baker, you can have a seat. Mr. Baird, may I call you next witness? Your Honor, the uh, defense was rested this time. Okay, so the defense is rested. The jury has gone out to deliberate, and after about 20 minutes, they returned with their glorious verdict. Mr. Meredith, Mr. Baker, if you'll rise. Madam Clerk, if you'll publish the verdict. In the Circuit Court of the 14th Judicial Circuit in and for Bay County, Florida, State of Florida versus Lee Forzon Baker, verdict, we the jury find as follows. Count one, we the jury find the defendant guilty of possession of cocaine. Count two, we the jury find the defendant guilty of possession of methamphetamine. Count three, we the jury find the defendant guilty of fleeing to elude a law enforcement officer high speed reckless. Count four, we the jury find the defendant guilty of possession of marijuana less than 20 grams. Beautiful, a classic case of fuck around and find out. Now the video cut off at the end while the judge was sentencing him. The state was asking for 10 years and when the defendant got a chance to show remorse, apologize for his actions and explain how it will never happen again, he instead said this. Does Mr. Baker wish to uh, present anything? I just ask you honor that you don't uh, listen to me to those 10 years, your honor. I mean, honestly, I know it seemed like I did something. In my mind, I really don't feel like I did anything wrong. I do apologize for putting other people's lives at danger because it could have happened worse than what it, what it was. And I'm glad I didn't hurt anybody. Not taking responsibility is probably the dumbest thing you can do during sentencing. I mean, even if you believe that you did nothing wrong, you better convince the judge that you did and that you're remorseful for it. All right, so the video cut off right there. And while the state was asking for the judge to sentence him to 10 years, the judge honored the sovereign citizen's request and only sentenced him to eight. So if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike. But don't forget to leave a comment below and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of my content. I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.